And then these are some of the components um, that work for successful treatment. Um, you know, good education for um, parents and kids about, about the symptoms, about the course, and about, um, you know, the more information you have, the better manager, you know, parents, kids, teachers, you know, the community can be in terms of uh, what's needed. Um, behavioral treatment um, is uh, an extremely important uh, component, and that combined with the next two, <laughs> medication man management and um, medication and behavioral treatment um, together. That when you actually add all of those components, plus getting good educational support, you're talking about extremely effective, um, you know, very, very, very good treatment that allows, you know, children um, and adolescents and adults to, you know, function extremely well in their day-to-day -day life. I came to the um, Mind Institute um, with my husband um, to uh, work with um, Dr. Julie Schweitzer, um, who is uh, currently conducting um, an MRI study. Well, actually, she has multiple studies going on, uh, looking at the different subtypes of ADHD. Um, and she is specifically examining what regions of the brain are responsible for cognitive control. And she's looking at, you know, typically developing children and adolescents, as well as um, children and adolescents um, who uh, have already been diagnosed uh, with ADHD. And I am not a neuroimager, and so I'm going to try to explain um, my one slide, and I think our um, our, um, our junior specialist on our research project is here, so you can help me if, I'm, if, if, if I don't get it right. Okay. Um, um, uh, one of the things that uh, Dan talked about before was memory and uh, working memory. And working memory is the idea of um, sort of trying to um, remember a telephone number while, while you're also doing another task. And that's what we have to do all the time. And um, for um, children uh, and adults who are trying to manage ADHD, that, those are the kinds of things that they're having difficulty integrating. It's like, okay, I've got to do this thing and this other thing at the same time. And what this slide shows are um, for typically developing you know, um, kids, teens, and adults, uh, this part of the brain, um, the frontal lobes, you know, that's like the conductor of your orchestra. Like if you think of your brain, your brain is an orchestra, the frontal lobes, that's the conductor. Okay, so for people who are, who are developing, you know, typically and have um, good frontal lobe um, functioning, um, they're using those regions, uh, you know, pretty effectively. They're using language to help mediate and organize any task that they need to do. Um, for people who are, have ADHD challenges, they're using a different part of uh, their brain. They tend to use more motor areas and more uh, visual areas to try and perform the same functions, and it ends up being not quite as efficient. And so this research is trying to figure out, um, uh, you know, the differences between um, the groups, but also trying to think about okay, in terms of interventions, what things might be more helpful for people who've got different types of um, uh, brain functioning, you know, what, uh, what kinds of things might be helpful in the real world. So that was the, that, that, that was the quick version. Um, I've got information about our um, research um, project. Uh, that's the uh, contact info. There are also sheets. Uh, in the back, um, and uh, our catchment area covers both Sacramento and Davis, and we're looking for teens and adolescents, um, both who are typically developing or who maybe have um, some ADHD challenges. Uh, and I'll just show you a really cool thing, is that uh, for um, any uh, child or adolescent who's in our study, they get, uh, they, they get an fMRI 
own picture of their brain, so you get your own personalized T-shirt. Your brain. So sorry, I, that that was so fast, but that was that that was the quick version. Thank you.